Well, praise the Lord in Jesus' holy and blessed name. What a beautiful day it is to be in Jesus. Oh, amen. Amen. Well, Brother Tom is with you here, and this is a ministry of Jesus Christ. And today, brothers and sisters, we're going to look at a subject that many people can relate to who uh, have gotten saved, who have been saved, and, and they go home, and they're all excited, and they want to tell their family all about Jesus and the reaction doesn't really go the way they might hope for it to go. There are times when someone is saved and their whole family gets saved along with them. Uh, it happened in my family on my dad's side. Many of my aunts and uncles uh, of the 12 brothers and sisters, like 10 of them all got saved in the same period of time where one had gone to see an evangelist what, you know, and was saved and came home and it spread through the family like wildfire. Beautiful. But there are also situations where it doesn't work like that. And it did work like that. And we have evidence of that in the book of Acts uh, with the jailer and Paul. When the earthquake happens and the jails open wide up and the jailer comes in and thinks they've all escaped. He's going to kill himself. Paul says, don't do that. It's okay. We're all here. And the jailer takes them home with him. And the whole the jailer's whole family is saved. Praise God. That's a beautiful thing. But then there are also times when that's not what happens as we're getting to now. There are times when you go home and the response is not what you would like it to be. There will be members of the family who kind of laugh and joke it off and, you know, oh, it's just some fad he's going through or she's going through. It's a phase. And in a couple of weeks, they'll be right back to their old selves again. Uh, you'll get that response. But then there is the spiritual work that's happening, too. There are times when family members respond in intense anger, not happy at all about what's going on. Mm -hmm. Now, when Paul had, or when Jesus had sent the disciples out, he warned them of this, starting in Matthew in chapter 10. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came to send, to not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not up his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, but he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Stop there. Those who confess Jesus before men, Jesus will confess. Those who deny, he will deny. And that's not just about a one-time denial. It's about a lifetime of rejection of Jesus Christ. For a lot of people reject him early on. You need to be humbled. But those who reject for the course of their life, deny, he will deny. Oh, amen. And, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Understand now that this is not a contradiction to other things we read in the word. This is very specific here about a specific situation. Salvation. 
and is a great divider. This does not mean that we cannot have the peace of God and peace with God, because we most certainly can and do, and live in a life that has peace in it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But there is a time when that's not the case for the world. That time when you go home and members of the family reject vehemently with anger and absolutely powerful rejection of what you're trying to tell them. Of you trying to share the gospel with them. They will not hear. As a matter of fact, they will throw you out of their house. I know. When I first got saved and went home to tell my family about it, my mom was there, my brother and sister, and uh, needless to say, it didn't go well at all. She threw me out of her house. I was not allowed to come back to the house if I was going to talk about Jesus. Yeah, it took 10 years before mom would finally come to the Lord. And when she did, she became my sister. My sister in the Lord. And uh, a beautiful sister in the Lord at that. But for a number of years, it was not so. It was not easy. When my younger brother was saved, we baptized him in the swimming pool there in the apartment complex. She was furious again. Absolutely furious. And as you dig into it, it's a spiritual battle taking place. Mom, there was a root of bitterness there over things that had happened in her life. She was angry with God without truly realizing that she was angry with God, but she was. And it took time. So she started out, what? For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. Not an uncommon experience, folks. So yes, there is not necessarily immediately peace <laughs> in that place, in that scenario. And it's not to be the end. Persevere. Stay faithful. Keep talking about the Lord. Be right. And over time, they begin to see that it wasn't a fad. It isn't you know, something that you're going through. But it's real. It's genuine. You are a true follower of Jesus Christ. Who picks up their cross and follows after. Even if it meant losing their relationship with a parent or with another sibling or with the best friends who figure, hey, you know, he'll get over it or she'll get over it and we'll be out drinking beer in a couple of weeks on Saturday night. But it doesn't happen. And soon they begin to see as well. And some will be convicted. The Spirit will convict some and they'll be saved. And then there will be those who do not. And they will deny. And when the time comes, Jesus will deny them also. But we will have preached the truth. We will have lived the life of faith by grace through faith. We were saved. Now we walk in the Spirit walk by the Spirit, guided, filled and sealed in the name of Jesus, 
that glorious name above all names, the name given. It's in the name of Jesus. So, persevere, brothers and sisters. Keep telling them about Jesus. It's okay. And when negative responses come, that's okay too. It is. Because it's all bringing about God's perfect plan for each and every one of us. How to reach. So we sow seed and we water and God gives the increase. And that increase will come when the crop is grown. When that person is truly convicted. Not by fad or some phase, but by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Tell them the truth. And regardless of how they respond, keep telling them. Oh, and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we can't say that it won't get interesting at times along the way. For surely it does. Brother Stephen and I were preaching, street corner preaching in Cleveland, Ohio. And we were having a wonderful day in the Lord and sharing Jesus. Things were happening and several people were saved. Along with this woman who was saved. And she ran home to tell her husband that she had been saved. Oh, she was so excited, praising the Lord, glorifying God. Kind of like the lame man, leaping and jumping and praising God. Not long after that, a rather irate husband showed up on the street corner. Shot Brother Stephen in the thigh. Thankfully, he was a really bad shot because he was certainly close enough to have done worse. But shot Stephen in the thigh, and I got hit just below my uh, left knee with a ricochet shot off the sidewalk. And so, yeah, sometimes the enemy will be those of your own household. The foe will be those of your own household. And to the best of my knowledge, to this day, she's still saved, and her husband doesn't like it. But she is in praising the Lord, glorifying God. Oh, praise the Lord. So, endure. Keep preaching. Keep sharing. Keep loving. Walking in God's grace, in word and in deed, that they might see your witness and glorify God. Oh, and amen. Amen. In Jesus' holy and blessed name, amen.